Joe Rogan sat down with The Rock for a three-hour conversation and said this about God as they dissected and explored this deeply theological concept. This conversation was a long time in the making. However, there was some controversy at the time with the apparent takedown job of Joe Rogan, which made The Rock hesitant to appear on his podcast. While it may sound dramatic, this is how fight commentator Chael Sonnen described this podcast after watching it. It was just these two incredible hours of awkwardness between two guys that weren't great at hiding the awkwardness. So despite some people believing this conversation felt awkward because of whatever previous past tension there was, the point we're looking at today is actually something they both strongly agree on. And surprisingly, it has to do with God and this biblical concept. So we're going to be picking this conversation at the 16 minute mark. And I actually have something that I disagree with them about regarding this conversation. But first, let's take a look at Joe Rogan describing Mike Tyson's definition of discipline. Mike Tyson had a great phrase. He said, discipline is doing what you hate to do, but doing it like you love it. Mm. That's real discipline. Yeah, like, that is. That's I mean, that that's what made Mike Tyson. Yes. You know, and, the, you know, the proof is in the result. But that's that's real. If you could just force yourself into being enthusiastic about everything, even if you don't want to do it, you got to do hill sprints. You're like, yeah, we're yes. doing these hill sprints. <laughs> get Let's go. It. Yes. Yeah. And then you get excited and then then it becomes something stimulating yes. instead of a drudgery. You look at it like uh, f this is something I got to do or I get to do. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah, like so I, get to I, do. I get to do it, man. Yeah, what a privilege this is. What's interesting about this mentality of I don't have to do it, I get to do it, is this is something I've heard serving in church for decades. We get to serve God, we get to read our Bible, we get to lean into our faith. This is something that's prevalent throughout most Christian culture, I would say. So it's interesting to hear them talk about this, and I'm curious if Rogan or maybe The Rock have some Christian influence in this phrase or the origins of this phrase without even knowing. So speaking of being influenced by church culture, in a moment I'm going to show you guys a couple of passages that I think Joe Rogan may be subconsciously influenced by. But first, check out what he had to say about this biblical concept, amongst other things, being appropriated. Gratitude is mm. so important. I know it's one of those hippie crystal wooden beads <laughs> things that annoys it. Because, you know, you hear it from the wrong people. Attitude of gratitude. And, yeah, and, there's yeah. certain things that get co-opted by the wrong, like the word God, I think, is the same way. It's, yeah. it's co-opted by some people, and then people have this negative association with it. But I think... Did you find it interesting that Rogan here is roasting the new age that's relatively newer than most other traditions? Isn't this kind of funny? The fact that something that is newer has a worse reputation than Christianity, which is from the age of antiquity, just goes to show that wisdom will be proven right by her children literally applies to everything in the world. Gratitude is one of those. It's, it, it is real, and it's really important. And if you could just appreciate your friends and appreciate your life and appreciate people and appreciate what you get to do, you can change your whole tone of existence. Now, what's crazy is this concept of contentment and gratitude isn't just championed all throughout the Scripture. It's also confirmed by science. And we're going to be looking at a Harvard study in just a moment. But first, let's look at two different passages from the Bible that may be indirectly influencing some of what The Rock and Joe Rogan are saying with regards to this concept of gratitude and contentment. The first one is in Philippians chapter 4. Many people know that verse 13, they have it tatted. I even think John Jones has this verse tatted on it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Super popular verse. What most people don't know is that this verse is actually in context of gratitude and contentment. Check it out. All we got to do is just scroll back a couple verses, and you see the Apostle Paul writing the church in Philippi, and he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at least your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. So Paul's going through it. He's saying that the church in Philippi has now the opportunity to actually care for him by meeting some of his needs. He says, though, in verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. And there that is, contentment, learning to be content. Paul was extremely content in this situation. In verse 12, he goes on to tell us, I know how to be abased. Is that word abased? Some may say it's pretty based. I, mean, I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things, I have learned both to be full and be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, we're going to look at a different translation of this. In the New Living Translation, it says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me 
in my present difficulty. So Paul is driving home the point that the way he's able to do all things through Christ who strengthens him is being anchored in contentment. This is also echoed when he writes in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, godliness with contentment is great gain. The pathway to flourishing is through the door of contentment. The pathway to you and I having breakthrough is first learning to be content with whatever situation we're in and whatever season we're going through, to first learn to be grateful for it. And the incredible part about this is we can look at scripture after scripture after scripture about this exact concept, but it's also confirmed with science. A recent study from Harvard Health Publishing confirms that giving thanks can make you happier. This article goes on to say that the word gratitude is derived from the Latin word gratia, which means grace, graciousness, or gratefulness, depending on the context. So even the actual concept of gratitude seems like it's connected to the Latin context of grace. And what is grace? Grace is salvation. Grace is what Jesus has done for us. Grace is what's extended to us even while we were far gone. Gratitude is a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible. With gratitude, People acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In the process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside of themselves. As a result, being grateful also helps people connect to something larger than themselves as individuals, whether to other people, nature, or a higher power. Now, this part is interesting. It says in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experience, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. Now, I'll link this study below, but here's a bit of research on gratitude. One group wrote about the things they were grateful for that had occurred during their week. A second group wrote about daily irritations or things that displeased them. And a third wrote about events that had affected them with no emphasis on them being positive or negative. After 10 weeks, those who wrote about gratitude were more optimistic and felt better about their lives. Surprisingly, they also exercised more and had fewer visits to physicians than those who focused on sources of aggravation. And it's interesting that this 10-week study encouraged people to write down things they were grateful for, which is exactly what we start with in our prayer journal. This is the exact way I've been able to develop the consistent discipline of praying regularly. And the very first prompt in our prayer journal is what are things you're thankful to God for and what are things you're grateful for, right? And the more you sit down, you write down these things, the more you're able to focus on the things you do have and not the things you don't have. The areas you should be content and grateful for and not the areas of irritation. Now, there's one thing I do disagree with that they said in this video, which is the initial quote of Mike Tyson. Discipline is doing the things you hate, but doing them as if you love them. Here's how I would say my perspective is different. The more we do the things we hate, the more we learn to love them. This is the beautiful part about the gospel, which is Jesus living the life we couldn't live, dying the death we should have died, in our place, on the cross, for our sins, and then rising on a third day. Why? To give us new hearts and new desires. That the things that I used to once hate, like reading the Bible, like praying, like going to church, all of a sudden, now I love. And the things that I used to love, like sin and sexual immorality, all of a sudden I hate. That's the good news, friends, that God steps into human history and does something supernatural for us. He gives us a pathway to heaven and the afterlife, but he also gives us new hearts and new desires. So to me, discipline isn't just white-knuckling things I hate. To me, discipline, over time, changes my desires. Over time, I desire to read the Bible more. Over time, I desire to read and pray and write in my prayer journal more. Over time, I learn to enjoy the gym. I learn to enjoy eating healthy. I learn to enjoy being in community or being held accountable. Now, this is just one look at how Joe Rogan may be indirectly influenced by scripture and not even know it. But if you want to see him be challenged on the resurrection of Jesus by Stephen C. Myers, click here. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.